Now, you had mentioned there was some abuse that kind of happened between you and Dre. And before I knew it, he grabbed me by my hair, picked me up, and started slamming me into a brick wall. I was getting dragged on the floor, shot at, yeah. Shot at? Yeah. Dr. Dre is far worse than I thought. He's been able to keep a low profile, but so many of his toxic relationships and violent crimes have resurfaced. Now people are starting to see him for the monster he is. So let's get into it. We're at a time where Diddy's downfall is upon us, so I feel like we're all taking a better look at other rappers. So I want to talk to you guys about Dr. Dre and some of his worst moments. Dr. Dre was born in February 1965. He began his career as a DJ in the 1980s and gained prominence as a founding member of NWA. His solo album, The Chronic, released in 1992, and it really cemented his status in the industry. He co-founded Death Row Records and later launched Aftermath. Entertainment. He has discovered and mentored major artists like Eminem and 50 Cent, and he's also part of Beats Electronics. We see the Beats campaigns, those big headphones everywhere. Well, that is him. So we all know who Dr. Dre is. No matter how many hit records you've made, no matter how many platinum records, no matter how long you've been in the business, it's nothing like hearing your shit on the radio. Straight up. I don't care what nobody say. Oh, I get tired of listening to my cut. You can listen to your shit a million times and be tired of hearing it in your car everywhere. When it come on the radio, you turning it up. Straight up. It's nothing like hearing your shit on the radio because you know... That is such a vibe, though. Like, it probably hits so different when you're an artist. Now, Dr. Dre's monumental influence on hip-hop through his pioneering work and successful ventures is widely recognized, but his legacy is also tainted by his violent actions and some of the past relationships he's had. Let's talk about the 1991 attack, where he put his hands on a female. So she's the host of a hip-hop show called Pump It Up. Her name's Dee Barnes and was attacked by Dr. Dre at a release party in Hollywood. According to rumors, Dr. Dre brutally attacked this petite pundit because of two separate interviews that aired together in the same segment on her show with both Ice Cube and Dr. Dre. D. Barnes said it was the producer's idea to put the two beefing artist interviews together, but Dr. Dre wasn't trying to hear any of that, which seems so immature on his end to go and attack this girl who's like mm, a middleman. We all know how the entertainment industry works. He picked me up by my hair and my ear and smashed my face and body into the wall. Next thing I know, I'm down on the ground and he's kicking me in the ribs and stomping on my fingers. I ran into the women's bathroom to hide, but he burst through the door and started bashing me in the back of my head. It just seems so incredibly immature and petty of him to go after this girl just because he doesn't like a fellow rapper. Then just go and hash it out with him. But I also understand he's probably frustrated with how the media set it up, but she's not one to go and attack. And while I was talking to this person, Dre approached. And what did he do? Did he say anything? Just grabbed me. He grabbed you. Grabbed you how? They grabbed me by my hair and started slamming me up against the wall. It's, it is a, it's a painful and traumatic experience. And then when you have, when you add celebrity into the factor, it's a constant reminder. And in my situation, there's actually referenced in songs. Not him referencing attacking her in music. Dr. Dre did answer for this moment saying, this was a very low point in my life. I've done a lot of stupid stuff in my life. A lot of things I wish I can go back and take. I've experienced abuse. I watched my mother get harmed. So there's absolutely no excuse for it. No woman should ever be treated that way. So at least he knows now. But he continued, any man that puts his hands on a female is an idiot. He's out of his mind. I was out of my mind at the time and I paid for it. I'm sorry. I've apologized for it. I have with this dark cloud that follows me, it's going to be attached to me forever. It's a major blemish on who I am as a man. He'd actually did get charged, which good. He pled no contest to misdemeanor battery and she actually sued him for $22 million. But of course this case was settled out of court, which is probably why she's so, you know, kind of 
careful with how she retells this story. In addition to him getting in trouble, there was one interesting part of his agreement. He was actually ordered to produce an anti-violence public service TV announcement, which seems so random to like tell someone, hey, you've committed this crime, now you have to go and do a TV PSA, but it's also kind of cool. Now, there was an ex-girlfriend of Dr. Dre's, uh, Michelle, who actually decided to tell her story of what she had gone through. It all stems from the 2015 Straight Out of Compton movie. It got a lot of people talking about Dr. Dre, and Michelle refers to herself as just a quiet girlfriend who got beat up on and told to sit down and shut up. She also labeled all of his apologies as him being insecure. Let me give you guys some context of Michelle. Her name is spelt like Michelle Lay. Michelle Lay? So it might be Michelle Lay. Michelle? Anyways, she is an R&B singer and former partner of Dr. Dre. She's made serious allegations against him. These allegations were brought to the forefront with the release of her biopic, Surviving Compton, which aired on Lifetime in 2016. They dated for six years in the 90s, and she opened up about all the traumatic experiences she went through. Michelle has accused Dr. Dre of getting physical during the release relationship, breaking her nose, cracking her ribs, and giving her multiple black eyes. The violence she experienced reportedly led to a downward spiral of substance abuse. Dr. Dre has denied these allegations and actually threatened legal action against her, but he did issue a public apology in 2015, not addressing Michelle personally, which actually led to her putting out her own statement. Now, I want to give you guys a warning that her voice is very high-pitched, which I think it's weird that I have to give you that warning, but when I watched the clip, I was taken back and it's not like a gypsy rose situation so i just want to be mindful like as we go into watching this together that her voice is very high octave you had mentioned there was some abuse that kind of happened between you and dre yeah uh, how bad did it get i had five black eyes five black eyes so, so, so you were getting punched in the face and, and oh okay. i was getting dragged on the floor shot at yeah shot at yeah shot at please like that sweet woman with that sweet voice imagine harming her there was a woman in the 1980s that uh dr dre supposedly harmed while she was pregnant in the book original gangsters uh, this guy named ben reveals that dr dre is accused of physically harming lisa johnson the mother of his daughter latanya daniel young ben's findings are supported by court documents and eyewitness accounts despite dr dre threatening to sue over these revelations this troubling aspect of his life was also depicted in film which actually led to people boycotting his brand beats because they don't want to support this kind of monster now terry b whose real name is Teresa murphy was a label mate of Dr. Dre's in the early 90s. She alleges that Dr. Dre harmed her at a post-Grammy party in 1990. The incident reportedly occurred in response to a track Terry B. had recorded titled Ruthless B-Word, which was critical of Dr. Dre. According to Terry, Dr. Dre punched her in the face twice at this party, which is another case of him and his pattern of violence towards women. Terry expressed regret for not pressing charges at the time, saying, had I pressed charges, he would have had a strike against him and maybe michelle would have stood up too maybe it would have made him think when dr dre issued his apology in 2015 terry b acknowledged it but felt like he could have been more genuine authentic and more of an impact like every single one of his victims has said so probably the apology did not suffice let's talk a little bit about dr dre's estranged wife this headline reads dr dre's estranged wife nicole young says that he held a to my head twice. She said in the year 2000 and 2001, he held a gun to her head, punched her in the head and face, and kicked down a door while she hid from his rage. Dre has been verbally and emotionally harmful. I currently suffer post-traumatic stress disorder over this. Dr. Dre, of course, denies all of these claims, saying that he never got physical with her, which I I don't believe. Nicole admits that she never called the cops after they tied the knot. She said she called the police in 1955, a year before they were married, because he had slammed her up against the wall and lifted her from the floor by her neck. He ended up settling with his ex-wife for $100 million. So tell me, a man that is innocent, uh, how is he going to go and willingly pay $100 million to someone he did not put through uh, years of hell? Dr. Dre has tried to apologize his way out of being canceled. He stopped himself from denying the allegations, saying some of them are true. Some of those things I would like to take back. I was really effed up. He said, 25 years ago, I was a young man drinking too much in over my head and with no real structure in my life. 
However, none of that is an excuse. I've been married for 19 years and every day I'm working to be a better man. Well, it doesn't seem like you've been a great husband either. This definitely ruined my perception of Dr. Dre and personally, I'll stick with the AirPods over the Beats if you know what I'm saying. Let's go ahead and open this letter. It looks like it's from Sarah and Travis and it looks like they are located in Arkansas. Why do I feel like this is like a wedding invite? Because I feel like when it has two names, it's like a wedding one, which I one day I will go to someone's wedding. <laughs> You're invited. I knew it you're invited um oh, a wild one is on the way join us in honor of oh is it your baby i love how you guys invite me to things like i wish i can go to arkansas but i can't it's also literally this saturday that's so cute oh thank you sarah and travis and honestly just congratulations on your baby oh we have a note here too oh we got some cards cute a little raffle thing oh my gosh i wish i could go i like don't even know you guys but i'm so happy for you Baby fever. Oh, cute. And I love the little jungle theme. I would show you guys, but I don't want to like expose any of the addresses. But thank you so much for the invite. I appreciate it. I've got a PO box. If you guys want to send me anything. But until next time, I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye, guys.